Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show. We are back with Marvin Snyder. Marvin is vice president, I'm gonna do it the right way, vice president of advancements at Bishop Moore. Um, and we are here today to talk a lot of, about a lot of things, community involvement, what's going on with the education system from his perspective. And of course, I love this having light, we pass it on to others, so I wanna talk about that. So welcome to the show, Marvin. Thanks so much for having me, Ted. It's a real pleasure to be here with you and, and your audience uh, here in uh, Central Florida. It's a, it, it's a great opportunity to, to, to share with one another. And I agree. And I, we have to give a shout out, of course, to Sarah Luter, uh, Sarah Edwards, as I know her. But Sarah, uh, she is, we went to college together and she, she is working with uh, Bishop Moore and suggested you come on. I'm like, yes, I've never had anybody from Bishop Moore come on the show. So uh, I'd love to hear your perspective. So give them a little um, a background on you. Everybody loves origin stories. So tell them a little bit about your, your journey. Sure, thanks. Yeah, we're, we're real pleased to have Sarah working with us. She came to us two years ago. And uh, you know, as you said, she's, she's a great light uh, to, to any team. Um, but uh, yeah, my journey, um, I, I started out um, many, many years ago in, in the world of higher education. Uh, I actually have my master's degree from Florida State and worked in college um, for a, a handful of years before uh, getting into the K-12 sector. So I started my career as a teacher, as an educator, and, and about seven years ago, um, the president of Bishop Moore came to me and said, hey, I, I want you to try something new. And uh, being the risk taker that I am, which my friends who know me very well go, you're really not a risk taker. But um, I took the leap of faith. I took the risk. And he said, I want you to come and do this uh, job called development. Um, and that, that's the term as it was at the time. And, and now it's called advancement. And here I am seven years later as the vice president of advancement at, at Bishop Moore, the largest private school and only Catholic school in Central Florida. What is what is the vice president of advancement do? I'm I'm fascinated. I love that word. Any kind of word that has a positive spin <laughs> on it is good by me. But what does that actually mean? What does that entail? I'm still trying to figure it out. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so, that is an honest answer, right? No. <laughs> so uh, the, the the nice thing is, if you think about um, what high schools have done, especially private high schools and and a lot of Catholic high schools. Um, around the country, what they've done is they've taken a college model. And if you think about going back to college, you have a president. The president oversees a lot of the business operations of the school. And then the provost takes care of um, the academic side of things. So if you look at it at a high school level, the principal takes care of the day to day like a provost, and the president does what the president does. And so if you think about advancement at the college level, we, we essentially handle anything uh, non academic. So uh, fundraising being the key component, um, special events, alumni relations, marketing, communications, social media, um, all of those things that wow. don't necessarily fall into the, the day to day of um, you know, the students in the classroom. That, a lot of it falls to the president's office and then uh, by default, a lot of those functions are carried out by myself and my team. So how did it go when all of a sudden we had to cease operations physically at the school. Uh, what was that like for you guys? Well, thankfully for us, it, we had a little bit of time to work out the plan because um, the closing of uh, the schools happened uh, as we were going on spring break. So we had our spring break, break plan. I think it was like March 13th, March 14th. Yep. Um, and so we were on spring break. We had a week to really dive in and um, get together as a team and, and plan what you know, things would look like. Again, we didn't know for how long it would last or how long it has lasted. Um, but we were able to get into uh, planning mode. And so uh, we had that week of spring break, followed by another week of break for the students and the faculty went to work that second week. So uh, planning uh, as it would happen really helped us out, you know, having that little bit of time out. And I think we've adapted as well as we possibly could. I mean, every day there's new challenges, but I think by and large, we're delivering uh, the best we can. Um, what's really helped us is, um, I would say it was probably about five years ago, we um, all of our, we did away with textbooks. People are like, oh, you did away with textbooks. Yeah, we, <laughs> we moved everything uh, to a digital platform. So all of our learning was taking place on an iPad. And uh, nice. you know, we, we had done a lot of digital learning that way, obviously face to face. 
But having uh, the academic resources already loaded on a digital device, I think really has helped us out. And our faculty were adept in using, you know, all kinds of different programs out there to deliver the curriculum. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think um, going to that format, um, having all the, you know, the, the textbooks and resources online digitally really helped us out. What do you think the biggest, uh, absolutely, you were ahead of the game. Um, for sure, at least as much as you could be uh, when it sort of all started to come come to come to fruition that we were all going to be shut down or sequestered or quarantined, whatever your favorite word is. Uh, but tell me about what what some of the challenges, initial challenges were for the kids. You know, I heard a lot. My wife is a private school teacher. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the biggest thing that I heard from parents who obviously this is the, for a lot of them, the very first time that they were super that involved on a daily basis uh, to the extent that they had to be, especially in the beginning. So I can I can tell you some of the challenges she had. What what's, what are some of the challenges that you saw uh, from the from the kids' perspective? Well, I think the number one challenge is you know going to school. It's a human interaction, and so that lack of face to face, um, constant delivery of content from a faculty member or or learning from that peer next to you, right? I mean, a lot of what we learn happens from those folks that aren't necessarily the teacher in front of the classroom, but it's that student that's working with us on a project. And so that lack of human interaction really, I think has been the biggest obstacle. Um, I mean, we can Zoom all we want. I mean, talking to you on a Zoom is great, <laughs> but uh, can you imagine the type of conversation and the, and the type of, you know, being able to read body language and yes. those sort of things that you don't necessarily get to see. I mean, we see a little bit of it, um, but, you know, being in the presence of someone, I, I think it's that human interaction. I, I think that's definitely been the biggest challenge. It's, too, it's hard, too, because it wasn't just the classroom that they lost. They lost the outside activities, the extracurriculars, uh, the things that uh, were bringing them the most joy yep. uh, in the world. And then all of a sudden they were with their families 24-7 and not getting that interaction, I think. Um, from some of the parents I, I heard, especially that it, they missed their, they really did miss their teachers. They mm -hmm. missed their friends. They missed those activities and you just, it's very hard to get that. Oh, that sounds like my house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, I had to shut my door. I would have heard the exact same thing. Uh, but I think that they, that they missed that so much. So I love the fact that we've been able to find ways. Are you all, um, what's what's the education like now? You guys are basically finishing up. I think Stacy's last week is this week for their school. But what what are you guys seeing now? The the progression. Do you think uh, people have adapted? Do you feel like people are in a good place? Um, I know we're opening up, but what do you feel like the students are thinking towards now that it's the end of the school year? Yeah, I, I think um, you know, like uh, fine wine, things get better with time. Uh, I think uh, we, we've you know developed in the beginning. We weren't sure how long this was going to last, and then once the announcement was made that this was going to last for the remainder of the school year, I think you saw a lot of teachers um, really dive into finding ways to make those classes more meaningful. And so I think, again, I think to the best of their ability, I think students are getting out of it as much as they possibly can um, without that lack of, of human interaction. To your point, I mean, that, that the thing that we can't replace is, you know, the, the drama productions, the, um, you know, the athletic teams, the, the, you know, student organizations that meet um, regularly. I mean, we can try to have digital meetings and, and we can engage, which we have done, you know, we have some time built into our schedule at Bishop Moore for um, some of these small groups to, to meet and interact. Um, but that's really the hard part, I think. It, it, it's that th those things that can't be duplicated um, virtually. I mean, we try and, and we'll keep trying. Um, but I think that by and large, people are appreciative of the efforts. They realize that uh, maybe um, the, the craft of education isn't as simple as um, they once thought it was. I think there's a greater appreciation for teachers and what they go through. and. I have a even greater appreciation for our administration uh, because you know if you if you think you're experiencing it, um, you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. They're hearing it, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly on on and unfortunately they hear more bad than they do good. So um, you know I think it, it's great right now that anybody who has a positive experience and whose child is having as positive an experience as they can to reach out and really let the administration know we appreciate you know what what you've been doing and what you're going through. 
Um, I, I think that maybe by the time all this is said through, there might be a little bit more compassion for those that are, you know, in positions of leadership and, and those teachers in the classrooms than maybe we once had before. Well, that that's the one thing, um, you know, I think, I think the teachers get forgotten sometimes, not not by the administrators, but in general, in the picture when the news is talking about it, it's re it really impacts the psyche of the teacher too, because the teacher loves their kids, uh, they love what they do, they love that interaction, and they're also socially involved with them. They're in the classroom with them all day long, uh, and so I think that we that that the news in general tends to forget that the teachers are also feeling it. Yeah. Uh, that most teachers I've spoken to don't like they they want to be in the same room as their students. They miss that interaction. Yeah, I don't I don't know many teachers or haven't met too many people over the course of my career in education that said, "Hey, I want to go be you know teach for Florida Virtual School." Uh, most of the ones I've met that do that look at that as an added source of income for themselves right. that, you know, to get into the profession of teaching is, is to stand in front of a classroom or um, be working side by side on, you know, projects. It's that, um, you know, being able to see that look on a student's face when they've solved a problem or discovered something new. Um, it's those, you know, sidebar conversations that you have with the colleague next door. It's the, you know, the student in your um, club that comes to you and, and tells you that, you know, they're considering pursuing a career in X, Y, or Z because of something that they've come across and, and working with you. Yeah, it's again, it all comes back to that human element. And it's really hard to to duplicate that in a digital format. Um, Agreed. And, and that's why I give so much credit to the teachers. You know, they're, they're having to totally adapt, you know, their, their normal delivery of content. Um, you know, if you think back, most, most teachers probably didn't take an online class. And if they did take an online class, it certainly wasn't delivered with all the bells and whistles that we now have you know via Zoom right. um, and you know Microsoft Teams and all you know Google Classrooms. I mean, we, we didn't have that, and, and I'm not that old. But uh, you know, when we did teacher <laughs> education, you know, none of those platforms existed. You know, yeah. our our uh, means of online learning was um, we'll email you out some assignments, and you need to answer some questions in a group chat, and that was considered your you know your digital learning. That was um, it. Right. I mean, I, and, and now it's 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 so much different. It's so much more than that. And so, again, the teachers are having to learn new tools, new tricks to the trade. And um, I really applaud them for every effort that they've made. And I think that, you know, on the back side of this, I, I can only imagine what the classroom instruction, once we do get back to in-person classroom instruction, what it'll look like. I, I think that this is really opening up a whole um you know, greater horizons, greater opportunities for those classroom teachers and, and, and allowing them to, um, to, to, to be re-engaged, to be reinvigorated, yes. discover a new passion. I, I mean, I hope your wife is seeing some, you know, you know, it, 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 through her teaching, uh, I'm sure she's got some new passions. She's got some new, some new light bulbs went off. Uh, for yeah, her. the creativity, like anything with COVID, I think that you can focus on the lack or you can focus on the abundance. And so on the education side, <clears throat> you all definitely had to scramble. And I think every educator, and no matter what level, did an amazing job getting that all together in really a relatively very short time. So kudos to all of you out there. But she, she definitely sees it as opportunity. There's, there's different ways to engage. Some of the mm -hmm. students that we're not as engaging in the classroom or much more engaging uh, when everything is digital and virtual. And so, you know, you, you're examining your kids and how they learn. We have a very uh, basic way of, and each teacher is different, but you have a basic way of teaching and a, and a traditional way of uh, consuming that education. And I think that this has opened up a lot of opportunities for kids mm -hmm. to go, hey, I kind, of, I kind of like this way and I'm doing better and it's opened up big opportunities for the school, which brings me to my next question. What do you think fall 2020 is gonna look like? Gosh, I mean, that's like asking me to be a soothsayer <laughs> and look into a crystal ball. Uh, I don't know. I had I really, a lot of people ask yeah, it already before yeah, we went I, live. I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of it's gonna depend on, um, I th let's put it this way. I think a lot of it is out of the hands of people like myself and it's out of the hands of our school principal and our school presidents. These decisions are gonna be made by the superintendents of the school district, by the governor of the state of Florida. And so this is gonna sound bad, but I don't put a lot of time into thinking about that. 
um, because I can't control that. What I can right. control is, you know, the connectivity that I have with the people that are in our community right now. I can be as good an employee as I possible can for our principal and our president, um, focus on the good, not the bad. Uh, so I, I, again, I, I think that the things that we can control, I think there's going to be an emphasis on uh, cleanliness, you know, of the schools, um, number of students in a classroom, um, those type of things I think are going to be heightened everywhere you go. But I, I don't know that at the school level, we're going to be able to make those decisions on, on what things look like. I think those are going to be made by the people who have access to all the, the, the research and, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of involvement from um, boards and attorneys and, and all those uh, folks that, that are going to make those decisions for us. And I don't, I don't say that in jest, but those people have, you know, they're, they're in a better position to make that um, decision. Um, well, it's going to, it's going to be a new world. It's just, there's, I, I think that people um, want to go back to a normal, uh, but I'm not sure that that normal is ever coming back in that particular way. But I, I feel like as a whole, the education world, has done an amazing job. So big, again, I can't say enough kudos to all of you. I just think that that was a big thing, a big moving boat that had been moving in that direction for a very long time. To have to reposition it and steer it uh, in a new direction was really big of you all. So big, big kudos to all of you. All right, I wanna talk about Bishop Moore and talk about community involvement. You guys are really active in the community. Can you talk about why that's important. I mean, we hear about schools being active in the community, but I feel like um, you all, when, when you see anything social media wise, and this could be kudos to Sarah or whomever's on the team, but I feel like you all really do reach out into the community and you have become an integral part of the community. Well, thank you so much for saying that. We really appreciate that. You know, it's it, it's been an effort to make, you know, to get ourselves out there. Cause I think um, by and large, um, Sometimes you can become too modest and not share the good work and the good deeds because you don't want to seem like you're bragging. Um, but right. there's great stories out there. And I think it all come, it comes from our faith. I mean, being a faith-based institution, um, you know, it's a part of who we are and our identity as, a, as an arm of the Catholic Church is to, to go out into the world and, and do good and help others and, and especially help others that are less fortunate than we are. Um, and that's what our students do, our faculty do, our alumni do on a regular basis. And um, so again, our, our role um, at the school is to share that news, uh, whether it be you know through social media or or share it uh, through print or um, when we're having gatherings uh, of like-minded folks um, to share those stories. And, and so that really is at the heart of who we are is, is going out and taking what we've learned after we've been at a school for four years and hopefully those 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 morals, those deep seated uh, convictions that we hold that you can take and live them out and, and and that's you know what it's about. It's about doing good, or to borrow from my tagline, it's about having light and passing it on to others. <laughs> well, so I love that. So let's talk about that. Is that the that's part of where does that tagline come from? Is that part of Bishop so, Moore? No, it's it. it so I'm, I'm borrowing, and it's copyrighted by um, not by me, but um, so I went to a, a small private liberal arts college in um, Springfield, Ohio, called Wittenberg University. A little bit of free advertising for them right now, but um, our school motto was "Having light, we pass it on to others." And as one of our um, traditions as seniors is, there's a seal in the middle of the campus, and when we marched to graduation, which was always held outside unless it was snowing or raining, um, you stepped on the seal until your graduation day. You didn't step on that seal, and it was a reminder uh, to take a look down on what you were stepping on. And, and the phrase "having light, we pass on to others." You know, many people probably look past it, but but it really, um, even even though Wittenberg's a Lutheran institution, um, it, it holds true in any faith, um, and especially my own Catholic faith is that you know, light is any any sort of knowledge, any sort of goodness, any any sort of positivity that you possess. You have a responsibility to pass it on to other people because um, you know you can be that light in the darkness for other folks. You just don't know you know what situation people are in. Uh, in the world, if they're having a bad day, I mean, trying to pick them up and, and lend a little bit of goodness um, can really, really go a long way. So, you know, it's something that I've taken into account. I've given a couple of speeches over the years to different uh, organizations, and, and I always try to find a way to, to weave it in because I think it's a simple phrase, um, but there's a lot, you know, if you dig deep into it, there's just so much to it. And, and you know, I, again, having light, we pass it on to others, you know, anything, you know, your show, 
uh, the different speakers that you have on, the, the, the topics you cover. I mean, you're, you're passing on light to other people. Uh, right. And I think that's some of our greatest responsibility that we have here in, in our civic society is choosing to focus on good, recognizing that there, you know, that things aren't perfect. But if we focus on commonality, if we focus on uh, likeness, if we focus on moving in a, in a, a good general direction, then, then gosh, society, life in general is so much less stressful. Um, we're so much happier. And uh, I, I don't know anybody that doesn't want to live a happier, healthier life. I, I agree. I think the, the collaborative spirit that you're talking about, it, if we could, if we work more together toward the same common light, with the same common, common light, toward the same common goals, or at least the goals that we want the society to be better, we want our communities to be better. That to me is an easier path than some of the people that I watch that choose the negative and everything that comes out of their mouth is negative about everything, about the world. Yes, well, the world's a challenging place. I think that you could either focus on the negative or you could focus on the positive. And so if you're focusing on the light, you do things like you all do. Yeah. You're out in the community, you're you're reaching out. It, it's not, um, it's, it's a matter of doing the right thing and helping people. I don't know, I think that it's just so important. I love that phrase, having light. We pass it on you, to others. You, you can borrow sure. it. You can borrow it all you want. Just I'm remember that little school Wittenberg. But and and I should also plug that um, if you couldn't tell, uh, maybe you can guess what subject I taught when I did teach in the classroom. Any guesses? Uh, let's see, literature. No, I was a AP government. I was a government teacher. <laughs> Were you? You don't strike me as a government teacher. <laughs> I was. I was. I was a passionate civics civics instructor. Civics, yes, of course. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. See, that's awesome. I I loved those topics. You know, back in my day, we didn't have a. We had we had. Um, I think I had one AP class, so I take that back. I did take AP, but I I love the fact that you're involved. That it doesn't. Um, I drive by Bishop Moore a lot because I live near College Park. Um, I just I love that you guys are super involved. But you always have been. I went to Colonial High School, and so I knew people who went to Bishop Moore. Um, I remember us hanging out. I don't know if we played football there or not, but it just, it's been around a long time and always been such a positive uh, influence in the community. So I have to ask you, because I ask everyone, what have you done, just Marvin, no Bishop Moore, no work, no anything else. What have you done to stay focused, to stay positive during uh, the lockdown? Uh, believe it or not, I've exercised, um, and, and it actually involves Sarah. There's been a group of us from the office. We we all have these Pelotons, and uh, we hadn't been riding them very frequently. And so when this um, all started, we we formed our own little Peloton crew, and uh, we've been riding three days a week, taking turns picking uh, sessions, and uh, we have a nice little text exchange between the four of us, and uh, we love it. We absolutely love it. I look forward to it. Uh, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're, we're up and at it early. You know, riding for a good 30, 40 minutes, sweating like crazy. And, God bless you. Uh, I got to tell you, I feel better. I, I really do. I feel better. Um, I feel sharper. Um, so it, it's it's been great, and and I I actually appreciate the amount of time uh, I've had with my family. Um, you know, even though I'm a, a, a virtual uh, teaching aide or teaching assistant, um, I have four children um, and uh, all in different. Well, I have I have an eighth grader and then I have triplets there in the fourth grade. So at least That's we only right. have, you have triplets. I so, forgot. about. So them. at least I, we only have to do fourth grade um, <laughs> once. But um, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the time with them. And, you know, at night we, we take a walk every night. We take the, the dogs for a walk through the neighborhood. And, and it, it's just nice. It's nice to slow down a little bit and, and put those things that are most important to us, you know, family, faith, um, health, um, you know, into focus. And uh, so I've, I've used it as a little bit of a wake up call for myself uh, and, and those around me. And, uh, awesome. you know, I, I, I look. I do look forward to the normal. If you can't tell, I'm a people person, <laughs> so I love interacting Definitely. with people. Uh, maybe that's why we have. I miss uh, that too. I, I miss that, right? I mean, I didn't. I, I'm a, I'm a huggy person too, and so I miss that. And I just the being in front of people with, like, even if they're at a different table than me. Um, you know, I experienced outdoor di uh, dining this past weekend for the first time. And wow, you, you're there and I'm like, God, I just missed the noise. Mm. I know that's crazy, but you miss that noise of people laughing and enjoying themselves. 
Um, so yes, I, I, I agree with you. I think that's good. Peloton, that's a whole nother language for me. So God bless and do good on that, you and Sarah. Um, so talk about a little bit, how do people get in touch with you? What if somebody's interested in uh, looking at Bishop Moore? Sure. So um, I'll answer the last question first. If you're interested in you know looking at Bishop Moore, if you're uh, looking for a, a, a school for, for your children, um, you're going to want to reach out to our admissions department. Um, David Manchon is our director of admissions. All admissions inquiries start there. Um, you can go to admissions at bishopmoore.org. Um, it's the email address, and uh, they, they will follow up with you. Uh, and that way, if you want to get in touch with us or Sarah, the infamous Sarah that we've been talking about in the Bishop Moore Communications Department, um, you can email advancement at bishopmore.org. Um, we keep it that simple. Uh, and uh, myself or a member of our team will get back with you. Um, we're pretty easy to, to, to check out. Um, all of our contact information is on our website as well, bishopmore.org. Um, it's nice. You're letting me give a shameless plug. Of course. Uh, Bishop Moore, it's fantastic. But uh, we're pretty easy. Um, we're very responsive to get back with folks. Um, you know, our campus is closed right now, um, as are, you know, all the other uh, school campuses um, in the area. So it's not like we have open uh, borders, so to speak, of our of our campus. But, uh, you know, if you want to reach one of us, uh, wanna, again, talk to our admissions director. We're, we're very easy to get a hold of and, and love to have conversations with you. It's all about a conversation. And uh, once you have that conversation, we can decide how that relationship uh, develops. And uh, that's what we look forward to. We look forward to, again, that, that human connection through the digital age and uh, welcome that return to, you know, whatever our new normal is. I don't know if there is such a thing as normal. You know, I remember back to, you know, when 9-11 happened, and that's what most people are comparing this to. Um, you know, we, we had a heightened sense of security at our schools. And... Uh, you know, we, we did get back to it, though, um, and, and hopefully through this with the advances in medicine, we'll get back to it. You know, educating our students, the young people of the world and of the United States, especially it, it's our it's it's one of the greatest things that we can do because they're our future leaders. And and so we got to get back to it and we got to deliver for them the best curriculum, the, the best learning experience that we possibly can. I agree. Well said. You were awesome. Thank you, Marvin Snyder with Bishop more thank you sarah edwards sarah luter uh for introducing us and suggesting it i love it i love uh everything that you had to say and i do love that bishop moore as is such uh an involved community par partner so big shout out to you guys thanks for being on the show marvin i really appreciate it absolutely it's a real pleasure thank you such a pleasure all right we'll be back later guys have a good one reach out to marvin or sarah and the team you know you want to all right see you later